Welcome everybody to another week of Sweet Talk with Sweet Pea. I'm joined again with Silvana. Hi Silvana. Have you had a good week? Yeah, awesome. Yeah, busy digitising and designing. As always. <laughs> And this week we have a special behind the scenes chat with Martin, um, Alyssa and Cassie, who are our testers here. They test our designs here at Sweet PHQ. They're going to be chatting about what they actually look for when they test. So that'll be very interesting, I think, Silvana. Yeah. Because you have a lot of lot to do with them when you're when they're testing, because they're testing what you've designed and it goes yeah. backwards and forwards the banter, doesn't it? So Yeah, so yeah, they come back with any issues. Yeah. Fix yeah. Them. So um you'll find out what they're actually looking for for their testing. So it'll be later on at the end of the video and right now we're going to talk about the latest designs that we've had released this week. The first one we want to talk about is this beautiful quilt Savannah. So what did you name it and what is it, what inspired you? So this is the Agra Star Quilt. So Agra, A-G-R-A? Yeah, yeah, so Agra is a place in India. So with this quilt, um, I was inspired by um, the book that I bought from an op shop, it was a book on the patterns of India and I just found them absolutely stunning, like the amount of detail on the architecture and dresses and everything is just outstanding and um, this is actually inspired by the ceiling, the decorative ceiling in the tomb of Itimad Uddala in Agra. And it's like a, the building is like a mini Taj Mahal. Okay, so it's, it's a stunning kind of building. A famous well known tomb, yeah. tomb, is it? Okay. Yeah, so this is in the ceiling in there. Um, well, inspired by the ceiling. Um, I've noticed in a lot of the Indian patterns, um, the six pointed star features a lot. So I wanted to um, really feature that. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. And there's a few different layouts for this one as well. So when you get the instructions, there's, I think, four different layouts I put in there. Okay. They all look slightly different. And because these shapes in the middle change. They Depending do, on yeah, how you place the blocks. Yeah, so you can have some real fun with that one. So these are all pieces of applique, so there's different colours there, so yeah. people can choose what they do there. Yeah. It's just beautiful. So what sizes do these blocks come in, Sylvana? The 5x7, 6x10 and 7x12. So these ones, um, Martin sewed this one up and when he used the 6x10 hoop to make this one, so that's the, the size there. But as Sylvana said, you can construct your quilt or wall hanging or table runner in many different ways to get different yeah. patterns with those blocks. So Agra, is it called just Agra Quilt? Is that what the it's Agra Star. Agra Star Quilt. That's on our website now. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that, Silvana. That's okay. We all, we're all learning different things, aren't we? Like now we know some patterns that are in India. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So moving on. So we've also this week is our another block's been released in our Easter mystery block quilt. So we're up to week four. So Sylvana's designed these that the quilt will, the blocks will be finished way before Easter in time for you to assemble them into a quilt. Every week, the people in the special Facebook group that we have for the mystery Easter block quilt, um, we judge um, just the individual blocks and you can win prizes too. So all the details are in that Facebook group. We'll have the details below. So this was week one. So do you want to quickly explain just what they are again for people so these who are, are new? Just some little chicks. You didn't want to go, you told me before, you didn't really want to go with the really kind of cheesy Easter. No, I just wanted it to thing. be um, Easter animals and spring animals and flowers. So normally with spring animals, you think of like baby animals and stuff like that, don't yeah. you? Yeah, so there's some little, cute and, then little chicks. and then you've done this beautiful applique in the back that's replicated on all the blocks. Like yeah, an so egg that's shape. like an egg shape, but it's quite subtle, so you, yeah. don't, you don't have to use this just to Easter. No. So this is week one. 
we'll be um, assembling these. We've got all the blocks, blocks already made, of course, because we have to know what they look like. Um, we'll be assembling it soon, so you might not see these individual blocks again because they'll be assembled in a quilt. That's a little hare. No, it's just a rabbit. A rabbit. And I love this little fella. He's gorgeous. <laughs> little lamb. And our Australian bilby. So, Silvana, you digitised and designed these, and you're not even from Australia, are you? No, so I'm from the UK originally. I've been here for 10 years now, but when um, when I first came and I had my first Easter here, I was really amazed by the um, the Easter bilby, because I'd never seen one before either, and I just yeah. thought they were super cute. And, um, yeah, you can get them in chocolate. Um, instead yeah. of chocolate bunnies, there's chocolate chocolate bilbies i would actually say it was only probably like when i was growing up which is a long time before you arrived in australia we didn't have chocolate but um the easter eggs made out the easter bunnies made out of the bilbies neither i mean bill's being been around for millions of years in australia and he's actually nearly extinct now um but it was only in the last couple of decades that the chocolate manufacturers sort of thought why are we having a rabbit when we don't really have rabbits? In, not that many rabbits. Well, we do have rabbits in Australia, but why don't we use this cute little fella as our representative for Easter? So he's he he isn't a rodent. He's a one of our Australian marsupial animals, which means they um they have their young in a pouch and everything, don't yeah. they? Yeah, and I think it's the size of a cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a cute little fella. So they're quite big. Um, yeah, and he's just super cute, and they are endangered, so it's just really nice to yeah um, raise awareness of this animal. So how many blocks altogether are they going to be? Nine. So nine blocks, so there's going to be another five. So another five cute little animals. We can't tell what they are because they're mysteries, but we've seen them. So they're very cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they're great. Thank you, Silvana, for that. Okay. And the final design that's been released this week is our tropical fish table runner. This is absolutely beautiful. And I'm pretty sure you can't really see the beautiful embroidery in photos because we've used bright colors to start with in the fabric. And then we've used our Incredi Thread bright range of threads mainly. And this is all the embroidery. So this is just a plain piece of orange batik fabric in there. And then, the, uh, and a bit of blue there on his face, but the rest is just beautiful embroidery. So I don't know the names of all the different fish. I know that one's a that clownfish. One's Nemo. That's Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clownfish. This one's a uh, blue regal tang. I'm it's not sure about the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so you can see. Hopefully, James can pick it up with the um, with the videoing of this. All the beautiful embroidery. So this is all. Um, so I'll just show you quickly the pack of threads that we mainly use for this. This is my favourite pack of Incredi thread. It's called our Bright Range. So these are the some that we've got out, um, but they're very, very bright and they suited this design. We did use um, some colours from other packs as well, but mainly they predominantly came out of this pack. And for the rest of the week up to Sunday, the, um, our Incredi thread is part of our t mega tool sale. So if you go online to the website, Incredi thread, you will see the um, selected coloured boxes um, discounted. This colour is discounted on the website, so if you go and have a look, you'll see. So that's our Incredi thread. And now we're going to head over to our testers and have a chat to them about their testing, what they look for when they test our designs. Coming to you from Sweet Pea Headquarters, I've got uh, Cassie. No, I haven't. I've got <laughs> I'm Alyssa. And Cassie. Hi, I'm Alyssa. <laughs> Who are you? Cassandra. Cassandra. Um, and we're, we're talking about testing today and what we do when we test our designs. So, we look for specific things when we're stitching out a design and it's very important that we're all consistent doing the same thing. Yep. And yeah. so, and we're all experienced um, uh, embroiderers. And so we try to make sure that there's no hiccups in the design when it's released now. But there, there's always occasionally something. There's always. There's, there's always something. There's always something, but we do our very, very best to test all our sizes and our designs. So we look at stitch density. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And when we say stitch density, we're looking at how close the stitches are, especially with our satin stitch, whether the points spin us nicely. And then also with, um, if we're embroidering flowers, we, like when we do the flower centers, yeah. it can be very dense. So yeah. then usually the, um, the digitizer, they like eliminate the center of the flower. Yeah. 
look for things like that and we and we look at we look at what's going underneath the stitches as well the underlays and the um the underlay of stitching is very important because we have a variety of those we usually opt for the uh the zigzag underlay yep. depending yep. on what it is yeah but the zigzag is usually our underlay for most of our designs for the gen general satin stitches yep. but then we do use tatami and stuff like that we do use it yeah mm. so we use sometimes you'll see that on our designs that we'll find that the zigzag is random it's all over the show and we use it for a specific reason so um it's not like it's a mistake it's a, it's a specific reason rather than using a zigzag yeah and it's usually when it's coming into corners that are have got a lot of detail on them or for or especially for freestanding yeah we yeah. do a lot, a lot of tatami underlays yeah. so or even yeah. we've got the sample here got the sample here and we had to focus on the underlays for the flowers and everything. So this was a this is just a first trial, and you can see like you can see some of uh, the cream fabric underneath our flower. So we've adjusted the underlay to make sure that, that is all covered. You don't want random stitches happening here and there, which yeah. this, which sometimes do. And then we can be fine with our panels, and all of a sudden we come to sew it up together, and we find that we've got a bulk issue somewhere in a, yeah. in a seam. And so that means that we need to start start again and remake that sample. Yeah. But it's not an issue. It's just it's just um, small hiccup. Small well. <laughs> It's just making a design work, yeah. and, and that's that's what we're here for is to try and make the designs work and um, getting the seams so as they flow on together and our satin stitches flow on together so as that things meet as things that meet up. So we we this was one of our um, what was this our uh, oddly, traditional. oddly traditional. So yeah. so we wanted to make sure that, that that our pieces match up. We've got to make sure our lengths match up and our center lines match up. And even if it's not a consistent um, pattern, we, there are some points that need to match up. So we, we check on that. It's um, also sometimes we we'll need to change the sequence of how something's done. Yep. It might it might be absolutely fine on a screen, but not in reality. We yeah. want to we want to do something else. Um, and that's how we 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 talk with our digitizers and we go to and fro and to and fro until we are happy with the end result. Yeah, many times. Many, yeah. well, it is many times. It is, it is many times. And it's not um, just us testing, there are no. other people that are testing yeah. Yeah, different so, machines. So once, once, um, once our designs are completed here and we've taken our photographs and we've done our notes, it goes off to our overseas testers or our local testers um, and then we they come back with their ideas yep. to see what they think and sometimes they'll make a, a, a suggestion a change we think oh we haven't thought of that yeah yeah um, also different breeds and different brands of machines do things differently one of the biggest things for us with the machine differences is, is that some machines you'll find that the hoop is loaded on the left hand side of the machine like like the brothers and Boninas and Fafs and Haswanas but then you've got Janome behind us there here where it loads on the right hand side so then for when you're looking at a picture when you're looking at a photograph on our notes you'll find that they don't look the same because your machine loads from a different side and then you've got the people that use the tin needles and they load from the back so yeah we can, we try and be as consistent as possible but you do have to make some alterations with the photos that you're looking at sometimes if your machine is not the same as ours yeah which is simple which is simple we can't be all the same no the thing other things we look for are really really important are the stops and starts where something stops where something a pattern starts where a line starts where it finishes does it finish on the point beside the point past the point it's very very easy for things to go awry because the screen is so small and you think you've got a point on top of a point in there but in reality it's missed. Yeah. yeah. Simple. Or you don't want gaps. Yeah. Gaps are our biggest problem though, aren't they? Yeah. They're trying yeah. to make sure the gaps aren't there. Um, also the direction of the stitching which is one of my pet things. I think it's, we all look at that don't yeah. we? Mm. It's, it's how a, a line gets stitched out within the hoop on a machine we try to make it go clockwise as much as possible. Sometimes it's not Sometimes, possible. No, Sometimes but... it's not possible. And we look at that because we want to make sure it's possible for you to hold your fabric easily. And if you've got hands that don't work the way they should, and sometimes mine don't, then I find that sometimes holding something unusually is really, really awkward. Yeah. And it's not safe. And sometimes no. you get bumps in your fabric with <laughs> a different, like, yeah, so yeah. that always helps when it's stitching the right direction. 
The other thing we look for is build up of fabrics. Yeah. So with an applique, yeah. especially for us in there, we've got fabric on top of fabric on top of fabric. And you can probably see with this one here, we've cut the cream fabric, which was the backing fabric out from behind the, um, the house. And each of these don't overlap by too much. And that creates a better seam to stitch along. It's when more you're putting even. It on. Yeah, yeah, when you're putting it on. Otherwise it'll just, yeah, be very bulky. Yeah, we don't want to have, have layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. Yeah, otherwise Makes it's it just gonna be too it's yeah. gonna be too high. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got your foot dragging on top of your work yep. and that's that's a real problem. So we try and cut away as much as we possibly can yep. without making it fray. Well, that's really important. Um, and the over the underlapping is important as well, so as we make sure that and the, our Actually, background fabric. You can see with this one here, we've had to adjust it. So um, our batting stitch down and our fabric stitch down are in the wrong order. So your batting, if we don't change it, your batting is going to be coming out, like be showing oh, in your little right, window here. Right. So this has to be remade. Um, yeah, so then we adjust everything so that the fabric is going to go over the top of your batting, batting. line. Right, so yeah. it's not okay. sticking out yet. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's very, very important. Um, we do have, when talking about uh, batting lines and placement lines and what have, we do have a, um, a theory here. We, yep. we have a recipe and our placement line is generally red. Yes. Yeah. And then it's our stitching line blue. is blue. A darker blue. A darker blue. Yeah. And so what we try and do, um, so our batting line is generally a, a, te blue. a tealy light yeah. blue colour. So we try and be consistent with that, so as that everyone sees the same thing every time we do yeah. a job, which is which is great. Yeah. Um, sometimes it changes. Yeah, sometimes, you can't control everything. Sometimes, sometimes it changes. Um, not ge not generally. We, we're pretty consistent about this. Yeah, yeah. So we we look at um, these lines being very very important. Your machine may change the colour though for what your machine does, depending on what thread selection you've got selected in your machine, depending on how you've sent your design to your machine. If you use a DST file, some people like using DST files, they have no colour sort, no colour command, they go through the rainbow, mm. so they never repeat. It's so just, that's not going to yeah, help. Yeah. Not going to help, help there, but commercial machines or multi-needle machines use DST. So, <laughs> unless you go through and change them yourself, they're, they're going to be as an assortment of a rainbow of colours. Yep. Our size of our pieces that we suggest. Oh yeah, this is always an issue <laughs> with this our customers. <laughs> <laughs> we try, we suggest, we suggest the size of our pieces that we cut. Now we generally suggest a square, don't we? we yeah. A, a square, so it's the width. We always make it bigger than we, we actually it, need. Yeah, always bigger than, than, than smaller. Um, just for your safety for and for us to suggest and make sure it's the right size. It also makes it easier to stitch them down. It does. There's something to hold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't want your foot, your fingers too close no. to the foot and using tools too close to the foot. There, so having the fabric a little bit bigger is great. Yep. Some people do make the comment that we actually there's a lot there's a lot of wastage there. Well, if you cut your fabric pieces a bit bigger than you should have, quite often you have a piece left over that you can use for something else. Yeah. yeah. I usually plan my designs like that when I'm working on a project. I usually plan to cut a little bit bigger so I can use the waste in some other area. Yep. Uh, not always possible though, is it? No. But, but no. Um, you can also use your scrap baskets. And, and we like have that. scrap bins. <laughs> <laughs> Days. Yeah. But it helps with like filling in those small spaces of yep. designs. If yeah. we want just a single colour, we can generally go to a drawer and find what we want, which yeah. is great. Which is great. These are perfect sizes for scrap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are. They, they are. And and um, I kept when I when I was doing this, I kept every single scrap there, and I had very little left over. Yeah, so it was great. Yeah, it was very, very, it was very, very good. When we were writing our notes, we also try and be jointly consistent. Yes. So as that you get the same story from all of us. Yeah. Um, and so our our workflow is important too, mm -hmm. isn't it? So, yep. so we start. If you need to make any bits and pieces to go in the hoop, so we start with sewing. Yeah. 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 So say like loop, yeah, loop. loops or strap. If loops you're making a handbag, you'd want to, and you've got loops on that handbag, or yeah. you want to make your strap, we usually suggest that you make those make before. And yep. So that if you do have, is it a duo machine? A or if you have a, a yeah a um a, not, a dual machine. Yeah, you're yeah. not taking the arm off and then putting it back on and then constantly yeah. going back and forth. Yeah. So that's why we set the instructions the way we do. Yeah. So as you ask, sewing, embroidery, and then we go and back sewing to sewing again. again. Yep. So as that you're not chopping and changing. That's, yep. Yeah. So that's consistency for our our style 
is consistent. We have a a blank which we work with, so our yeah. style is consistent. Yeah, our, it makes it easier for the customers to follow. Our language is consistent, so yeah, we yeah. try and keep our language the same and our yeah. jargon reduced. Yeah. Um, yeah. We try and keep our language simple um, because then it's easier for Google Translate. Yeah. So is that they can pick up the words the way we mean them rather than being getting, giving a, um, an odd finish to our phrasing. Our yeah. phrasing. Because we, I mean, say as, as Australians, as Australians, <laughs> <laughs> we do have the some jargon. quirky ways of saying yeah, things. Yeah, we do. <laughs> so. We try and condense the instructions down as much as possible because yeah. um, yeah. they do get quite long with all of the photos in them. Yeah. Um, so, and if, that's for instance, if we we will show you a method of doing something, and if that method is repeated and repeated and repeated, we'll tell you to for go like back applique? and repeat it. Yeah. 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 It's just it just keeps. A document down to printable size because I know that a lot of you like to actually print out your notes. I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. You I'm don't like, want to be printing out 79 70. pages. Yeah. Or, I mean, sometimes the they can pack, be that 75 long. pages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and we understand that you do like printing them out so as you can actually tick your steps off and you can work through page by page because you don't sit for hours and hours and hours like we do creating a project. Yeah. You just come, come and go, go and back. Yeah. Things. When you have time to do it. Yeah. So. Um, what else we need to look at? I think that's possibly about, about it. The, the most important thing for us is that we are consistent. We try and be as consistent as possible. Yeah. We also do take notice of your comments that come back to us through our social media or through an email. We, we, we try very, very hard to actually listen to all your suggestions. Yeah, it's always helpful when we know yeah, where absolutely. we can improve. Because the one thing for us is that because we do it every day and we do it so often, you know, that it becomes second nature and mm. something at times something that looks really simple to us is not. Yeah, and be difficult to someone else. Keep it simple, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So, well, the one thing that um, for me particularly, for me um, in testing is that I like to test new ways of doing things. So mm. we before you start your project, before you start completely. the project, so we were we were testing how to do Chanel work. And then we were testing uh, another way of doing, which is another project, cool which is the quilt as you go. So we, you know, we, we try and create new things, new inventive and new exciting things that you can do within the hoop. And these things are always tested. These are, things are always tested. By multiple people. Yep. It's, if I am doing something and I think to myself, oh, this is quite simple, then we give it to somebody who, who hasn't done that thing before. Yeah. And it might not be quite simple. Yeah. yeah. Sim well, that's that's the difference between the way you work and how yeah. we work. You've yeah. got many years of experience. Yeah. Absolutely. Whereas yeah. Alyssa and I really did just learn on the job. We did. So we are like you in some factors. Like yeah. we've, we've just, we're kind of new to this, but we, we know the little things that you can pick up and do differently. Yeah. Mm. So there's a difference between how we all work essentially mm. but when you're working you do think that there is a lot of things that are very straightforward and yep. simple and then we can look at it me and Liz no. and no. be like oh no that's actually quite difficult <laughs> really like let's hard. explain it this yeah. way yeah. So. absolutely and Which sometimes we need to put like diagrams and yes. yep. diagrams arrows into well. the instructions yep. yeah I think sometimes, you know, as much as that you have a lot of experience with doing stuff there, sometimes that's a hindrance, yeah, more so yeah. than a help. Mm. Yeah. Um, but then it also leads to avenues of just saying that we can actually try new things. Yes. Um, but we just have to try new things more simply. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so we work very well together, the three of us. <laughs> well, we do. We do. Um, I mean, so the most important thing for us is that we have our product that goes out to our marketplace, to our customers that we're happy with. That we have tested thoroughly, yeah, um, and all our sizes get tested, which yep. is which is very important. And we do yeah. use different machines now; like we have yeah. quite a wide range of machines. Well, that I think we, use. we cover all the brands. I mean, you say we've got Bernina testers. We we do Brother here. We've got Janome here. here. Yep. Um, we've got. Um, We've also got Husqvarna and yeah. Faf. Yep. So I mean, so so we we are covering our ba bases <laughs> because the machines receive the information differently. Mm. Some of them are more clever than others. Yeah. But so we ha try and do run of the 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 mill middle line machines, so as that we don't have all the advanced features because not everyone has it. Yeah. Easy. So I hope that gives you an insight to what we do in testing.
And just a reminder to enter our photo competition, this is going to be a community-based one where the winners are picked by the number of likes they get for their photo. So all you need to do is post a photo in the group of a sweet pea design you've made recently or in the past using our PU faux leather. And you just have used, you have to use the hashtag. So that way we know that you're entering the competition. The hashtag is hashtag celebrate sweet pea essentials. It's free to join. Um, what else? So the earlier you get your, your photo posted with that hashtag, the more people, the more time you're going to have. Um, we're going to have this running till the middle of next month, the 12th of March. So if you get it done now, you'll get maximise the number of likes you, you'll get on your on your hashtag photo. <laughs> I just had to look over to James, the director, to make sure that I said all those. Yeah, I, I think that was it. it. That was it. Did it. <laughs> So thanks everybody. I hope you've found this week's Sweet Talk with Sweet Pea informative. We'll catch you next time. Bye. So if you've liked any products on the video this week, uh, you can go to our website, which is swpea.com.